In this video, I'm going to give a tutorial on how to get a consistent film out of Runway Gen 2 and Gen 1. I'm going to reference a film I made called Lost Marbles. It's 45 seconds. I'm going to do a walkthrough of it, so it's pretty critical that you watch it. I'm going to start with some general learnings I've had on Runway Gen 2, and in the walkthrough, we'll go through prompts, reference images, settings, using Gen 1 for action shots, editing, and music. After playing around with Runway Gen 2, it became pretty clear that CGI animation like Pixar or DreamWorks movies is likely where Runway is strongest right now. Animated animal characters in particular seem the easiest to keep consistent, and there's an easy reason why. There's no clothes, no fingers, and no complexity. Most footage in the video archives the models are trained on is full of landscapes and close-ups of human faces. They aren't trained on a big database of close-ups of hands and wiggling fingers, because that doesn't exist. And if it does, J.P. Pruitt isn't sharing it. Until then, always remember, Gen 2 and other models struggle with hands and a lot of complex biology, so just stay away from it. Quick recap, simple shapes and prompts are better, CGI animated animals work well, hands and complex physical shapes are usually a disaster. Now you can also do more complex prompts, I'll kind of walk you through that, but you're gonna see where it goes wrong. So in this case, I'm talking a lot about the lighting, giving a lot of directions, talking about depth of field, getting into how the camera moves. It's gonna be a lot of complexity to handle. So you can see here, we got some decent options. Those look like good uh, previews at the very least. And gonna go up to the top one here. This is not how fast runway actually is. Okay, so it starts off really well. It kind of plays to the image. It's got the lighting prompts, the initial character, and the forward tracking I asked for. But as you can see, the I mean, the dude turned into a torch at the end. The depth of field didn't change like I wanted it to. There was no dragon in the end. That was not in the reference image. So pretty much what this has always been doing is just working off the reference image. That was about 90% of why it gave me what it gave me. And then it took my little prompts into account to some extent. Without an image, it's still doing great on the color and tracking shot, but most of what I asked for, including the basic torch, isn't there, and the dungeon feels a bit off. So keep your prompts simple but thoughtful. And what I mean by thoughtful, so in this case, I wanted a comic book look, got much more of a CGI video game style, and I had to think, what does it need to understand what I want? So I just threw in two words, hand-drawn, and that kind of covered the gap of it not looking like a sketch. So now my outputs were getting better. It still looked a little bit too polished and not comic-y, so I threw in black and white. And now it started to really figure out what I was going for here. So a lot of it is just thinking, what is the context that's missing here? How would I explain this to my mom? How do I explain this to AI that is not gonna immediately understand everything I want? So keep your prompts concise. Don't go too sophisticated. Think hard in the context that it's missing and add brief context. I only added four words, hand-drawn and black and white. So going back to the Lost Marbles film that I referenced in the start, here's the super simple prompt that got everything in the short film started. So it's among the most basic prompts I've done. It produced one of the best results I had that day. I'm not particularly into the whole overly cute bunny thing. I'm not a furry fetishist, but I was getting some stock footage and saw that the composition of that was better than anything else I was really doing at the time. And when you get a good outcome, but not the one you plan, it is a good idea to just double down on it and treat it like a unicorn because Gen 2, more often than not, will not give you exactly what you want, but you can do a lot with great images. So notice the rabbit wasn't dancing like I asked. Another issue was the rabbit was transforming itself. So I decided to kind of just throw my script I was writing and Gen 2 was now going to lead my story's direction. And I was going to just work on keeping it coherent as I got more images. I didn't want the rabbit to be transforming though, so I started to use seed locking to try and get better iterations out of what it was already giving me. So all you need to do to seed lock, copy and paste the seed number here, and you can also do it by beginning your prompt from the assets page of the video in this section. So just to really dumb it down, go into your navigation menu, at the bottom left there's assets, go into gen two, double click the video you wanna seed for, you can then copy it into your clipboard or just prompt it immediately. I used a screenshot though, a part of the video I liked the most, and this is really important, a part where it was facing the camera. If your angle's off, it's gonna probably give you a distorted result. 
So seed locking ultimately wasn't as important as the reference image, which is what I was mentioning before. So sometimes I'd get a better result with a new seed, but just taking a really good screenshot of something else Gen 2 had given me. So the trick to reference image, give Gen 2 exactly what it gave you with new context. In this case, I took a screenshot of a rabbit I was already using and went to Canva and overlaid a marble I had from another shot that Gen 2 had given me as well. And now I had a similar enough rabbit and marble together in the same shot. Now, since both the rabbit and marble looked a little different than the other versions, I didn't want to hang on these shots too long. This was an editing technique. If you fixated on it, that would become your new point of view and frame of reference for what these rabbits look like. And I knew that these weren't the ones that were probably going to be the most dominant, especially with what I was getting in other Gen 2 outputs. So reference screenshots of Gen 2 footage when you can, try out seed locking, and when it's inconsistent, quick cut, and you're editing. So just going back to a really important point, be very flexible with your story. You absolutely will not have Gen 2 stick to your script. Sometimes you'll get some of the story points you put in your prompts, but most of the time you won't. So the story I started with was not the one I ended with. I tried for about 40 minutes to get the rabbits to chase the marbles, and they'd always just stare at them. So by that point, I had evidence Gen 2 could do great footage of rabbits looking off screen with interest. So I pivoted my story to fit it and just had the rabbits observing. The problem is observing is not inherently sexy. When it is, it's probably illegal. So to keep it interesting, I knew I needed action and variety. So what I did was went to Canva and I overlaid a telescope and I did it on top of an image that Gen 2 had already given me and I was already using in my, my film. So it gave me dynamics to the rabbits observing the marble on the track. And then I kind of played with it. I added a vignette for the telescope's point of view. It helped me establish that the marble was now moving away from the rabbits. And it naturally led me to more of a conclusion that this is fading away and going out of distance. It's time to sunset and close it out. There are two shots where I use Gen 1. Both are following the marbles. Gen 1 is better for action. You give it a video, it gives you exactly what you put in the video in a different style. It can do up to 15 seconds. But as you probably guessed, it's all in the prompt and that's my secret. This prompt was super basic, just like a lot of the Gen 2 prompts I used that worked. That doesn't mean you're going to get these results right away. I tried several attempts, found that nothing was quite as influential as the preset styles like Cloudscape. Cloudscape matched my color palette. You should use a different one for yours. That was more on me to adjust the colors though on the Gen 2 videos to match it when editing. I also found that medium to high style weight and low structural consistency got my best results. So go into your advanced settings right under the text prompt. If you up the style weight, it'll increase focus on your presets and text prompts, up the consistency to mess around with your structures. So use Gen 1 for action and longer shots. It can go five times the length Gen 2 can. Look for presets with your desired style or color palette. Experiment with style weight and structure. All my good results though had a two for structural consistency. A lot of what makes the video work is in the editing. I used Final Cut Pro. Given the outputs are very out of your control with Gen 2, there's a few things you're always going to want to edit. Color, clip duration, transitions. Color was a major part of why the video felt consistent. The green and pink palette made each clip feel connected to the last one. In Final Cut, I'd emphasize greens, pinks, and brightness, and I used color wheels to better match the preceding clip. I even made sure the credits at the end stayed consistent with the colors. If you're not using Final Cut Pro, this is still a basic feature in most video editing tools, so just Google it and figure out how to play with it in yours. Later in the video though, I wanted you to recognize that the sun was setting. This meant needing to gradually dim the shots and bring in darker blues. Sometimes Gen 2 would even mess up my lighting for me. So I'd often reverse clips and would set a start marker and an end marker that would gradually let me bring the levels down in a given clip. Clip durations are super short with Gen 2, so sometimes I'd stretch them out to keep the pace from feeling frantic. Editing really influences how the viewer feels, especially the pace that you cut from one shot to the next. So if your story is about a gentle giant, it's not going to work if you're doing quick cuts. Gen 2 also produces a lot of slow moving shots, so I'd have to speed those up sometimes to keep it from getting boring. You as the film's director and editor have to watch your own film and think about how it makes you feel. If you feel anxious or excited when the scene is not calling for that, it probably means you need to make some tough editing decisions to fit your story. Transitions were simply hard cuts until the near end of my story, 
Since I wanted to convey the passage of time and the rabbits getting sleepy, I started to use dissolves to give the feeling that time was passing. The editing techniques often used in montages to give you that feeling of time passing. And show us the passage of time. We're gonna need a montage. Ooh, it takes a montage. Always fade out in a montage. If you fade out, it seems like more time has passed in a montage. The last thing was the music and music absolutely has to fit the feeling of the film. And I tried many royalty-free music options before I arrived at a sound that had mischief and a fairy tale feel and it totally fit what I was doing. So this was created by Jeff Harvey. I found it on Pixabay. This is not a sponsor or anything. And since these tracks aren't custom made for our films, you gotta play with them slightly and make the clip lengths better fit in. You wanna emphasize certain moments using musical cues. So it takes a little bit of trial and error, but do some editing and play around with it and it'll sound better. I've since listened to a few more of Jeff's tracks and he has some brilliant royalty-free music. Go to his website and check that out. If you like this lesson, please subscribe. If you want to learn more, you can also go to therealrobot.com and be notified when my film courses come out. Thanks for watching.